Hey everyone, Tim Keely from physiorehab.com. Today, two exercises for rotator cuff tears, namely supraspinatus. Now, these are the two that I give my clients who've got a supraspinatus tear, but it's minor. So not a big one like I had that goes for surgery. A minor one, could be degenerative, could be an acute one, that is so small that you're never really gonna go for surgery for, and they've got impingement. So when they raise into abduction, they've got a painful arc on the way through when they've got that tear. So we need to work on getting the range above head better. So we work on exercises that don't involve the rotator cuff to lift the arm. We're actually involving getting that range movement better and using other muscles in the shoulder joint to help you through the range. So we're gonna go through an overhead like eccentric movement to involve other muscles using adduction to help with abduction. Complicated, but I'll show you. Second thing is actually working on your abduction strength, but again, eccentrically. So we're trying to work on tendon strength more than muscular strength. We're gonna start with the eccentric stuff. And these are the ones that we could do for people sort of acute from a, you know, it could be an acute tear on a chronic problem. Regardless, they need to get their range of movement better and they need to get the strength better. Now, like I said before, these are small tears, not big tears, okay? So not the big tears that will get bigger if you keep sort of pulling on it. When you've got a small tear, if you don't exercise it, it'll usually get weaker and more painful and more dysfunctional. So they have to do exercise. They just can't do the high level stuff like shoulder presses and heavy lifts because they haven't got the strength for it. They need to do the low level boring stuff to try and pick up the strength reduce the pain and stabilize it, and then see how that progresses down the track. And if they go for other injections and surgery, so be it. But we've still got to get that phase where they're doing the acute rehab work to see at least get some strength up and reduce their symptoms so they can stabilize a little bit more. And increasing the tendon strength and reducing that impingement is part of the process. So I'm gonna go through those two exercises in this video. First one, let me show you overhead one. Now, this is when when that person cannot come up here smoothly and they've got pain the way through. Maybe it's like they get to about sort of 89 degrees and go, oh, that hurts. Oh, it's increasing. Then it's a little, oh, that's a little bit better actually. I can get to there. They haven't lost their full range, but they've got pain on the way through. When they lift their shoulder, meaning when they concentrately use their delta and their supraspinatus to get it to lift up. So we're going to go through the abduction range but I'm going to use a band to do the lifting instead of my deltoid to do the lifting. So I get less impingement. Now, if you understand your anatomy, if I get my deltoid doing less work, I'll get more range with less impingement. So this band goes over here. I need this higher than me because it's got to be enough tension when I'm up here that it's still pulling me up. So when I get to a height like that, I need to have a little bit of tension going on here. The band also needs to stay in front of me because otherwise it's going to hit me in the face. But when I pull that down like that, that band's going to go right in front of me. So I'm as abducted as I'm in that plane as, as best I can. So from here, what I'm going to do is let the band, I'm going to lift it a little bit because I have no pain from zero through to 80. Then I'm going to hit that pain range. But this band is helping me out so I can relax that delta. It. I don't have to lift it. Holding it there is actually, this band is pulling me up, so I'm using muscles under here to actually hold it down. I'm resisting this pull from the band. Okay, so it's like eccentric adduction, if you like. So from here, I'm gonna slowly let this glide through, nice and carefully, to keep this deltoid switched off. You see this is sort of turned off a little bit. There's a little bit of tension there, a little bit of load, but I'm not using the deltoid to the maximum to lift up. There's a bit of activity, which is what I want, but I want my shoulder to get through that range pain free. Otherwise I start losing some of that range. Then I pull down, which is using muscles in your shoulder to stabilize and work. There will be a little bit of activity in rotator cuff, but this one is more about trying to get pain-free abduction movement and get me through range so I don't seize up. I can maintain my joint range while I'm healing while I'm getting my supraspinatus stronger. So very important work that you go nice and slow and try and get the tension correct. All right, so I've got enough lift, not too much, but with enough lift to drop the pain away. So I don't, it's almost like I'm reducing the work rate and the deltoid and supraspinatus, increasing the work rate of the band, 
So I get that balance right, and I've got enough work right there, and less pain, okay? So that's a really nice one to do, and we get it for people who are in that acute phase, who need to get, let's get your range better, but they can't lift their arm. They certainly can't lift the weight with that and go overhead, and they can't shoulder press. Really nice one to do. Second one is actually working on the supraspinatus tendon itself. Again, in that acute phase, you want to be working on eccentric control. Same band, throw it down low. All right, now you can put that on there, or you can put it on your foot, I don't mind. Then what I'm going to work on is a bit of heavier load, all right, as much as you can tolerate without pain, just remember that. You're not going to do this, up and down, up and down, up and down. What I want you to do is grab the band, take all the tension out of it so it's loose. Get your arm to below the height of where that pain is. There's no point sort of going really above 70, you sort of run around it's about 60 degrees, because what's going to happen above 60 is your shoulder blade's going to move anyway. So this is a chance for you to stabilize your shoulder blade, get your arm in about that 60 degree angle, and then slowly let this hand relax and put the load on. Now what I'm doing is resisting isometrically here. Okay, so I've got an isometric control of the deltoid and your supraspinatus, and then let that slowly drop down. So I'm doing eccentric abduction. I'm working that tendon on the downward phase, and it's in a pain-free zone. So I can strengthen the tendon with a decent amount of load. And remember, this is as much load as you can handle below pain. I don't want this painful at all, because you don't want to stress the current tear out, but you've got to strengthen around it. And especially people who are going for like PRP injections and that sort of stuff, it's really important that we start strengthening and doing this sort of work and focusing on the eccentric phase first so you're getting the tendon strength up because one improves that um, strength around the tendon, improves the function. So when you do this, there's more strength through the tendon, therefore you'll get better function of the ball in the socket, less impingement. Now this doesn't take into account bursitis and all that sort of thing. This is just if you've got the supraspinatus tear, whether it be chronic or acute, and you need to improve your strength and reduce your painful arc range. So those two is what I give people for homework, okay, to improve through that first bit of phase. See you next time.